this video is a follow-on to the first impressions video I recently made and so you could call it the honeymoon's over review as I began to get to know the bike after the initial love at first sight impulse purchase. I'm bolting this video together as I go along because I'm running out of good weather to run the bike in here in England and have not quite clocked up the 600 miles as I speak so um, I want to ease the powering gradually so I may or may not be able to give a taste of the real power at the end of this video but hey there are lots of other videos out there showing the performance of the RC390 on the track I think it's a known fact that this is a serious performer in its class. So what I'm doing here is taking the bike out and when I can find time and on dry days uh, to clock up the 600 miles run in and I'm taking notes of my thoughts as I ride on each occasion and then I'm building up the video in an organic way. Now I used a tiny Mobius camera and immediately found that by mounting it on my helmet the wind noise just drowned out the distinctive throb of the single. Oh incidentally I hate singles and also velcro on jackets but then I'm open to changing my mind. So I decided to make up a little aluminium bracket to tuck the camera in the velcro strip on my jacket and mount it lower under the protection of the fairing. I then had to experiment with putting a pro mic down one of my boots and I still haven't captured the pure sound so I may have to revert to sticking a folded beer mat in the spokes of my push bike to get the real sound uh, as you did when you were a kid. However you may have to put up with some of my guitar playing over the wind noise. Okay, talking about kids, there's two main things I want to say right at the start. When I sit astride this bike and power up and ride off, I feel 30 years younger than I am. Now that's a fact, and a tonic for any older riders watching. Forget those heated handlebars and comfortable chairs on wheels. There's nothing graceful about getting old, so my philosophy is, live in denial. <laughs> now the second thing, and this is also personal, I'm known as an accomplished woodworker and a designer and this bike is like a tool. When you create a good piece of craftsmanship and design you need the right tools, not necessarily the most expensive tools. And when I engage with wood I'm not aware of the tool I'm using and this might just be my opinion of the RC390 but it not only begs you to ride it but you become at one with the machine and are hardly aware of it as you lean it round the corners. The only awareness I had was a slight inevitable wrist ache after 20 miles of riding or so. Uh, I have strong wrists as I used to be a gymnast. And I also struggled with the foot brake and seemed to be having to lift my right foot off the pedal onto the brake. Now that's partly the problem with boots. And I'll get my gripe about Velcro off my chest. It's a nightmare to open the pockets. Uh, the Velcro is so effective. As to single cylinder modern motorcycles, well I hate them but I like this one and I'm just having to live with the fact that it's lumpy at low revs. Over 4000 revs it seems to be smooth but at this point of the video I have not taken the revs over 7000 so the jury is still out regarding vibration. Well, in October I took the bike out with friends on their Moto Guzzi down to yeah. Cheddar Gorge. Now my friend's partner sat astride the KTM, uh, she's about 5 foot 6. And I'd say you wouldn't want to be much shorter than that for this bike. Well, we did about 60 miles and yes, I did need a couple of stops, but I didn't suffer back strain, but just slight wrist ache. And of course I needed to stretch my legs occasionally. I really had very little opportunity to ride over the British autumn and winter, hence the delay in completing this review. But I did clock up the necessary 600 miles for the first service. Uh, now that involved a few discussions with the local KTM dealer, who I bought the bike from, and KTM themselves, uh, because the uh, service charge seemed very high and I wasn't sure what it entailed. 
And also I wanted to find out whether I could get my regular local uh, garage mechanic to service the bike, uh, but obviously the warranty uh, would be affected. Well, I was lucky that my KTM local dealer in Bristol had just installed a new service manager, so I kind of got good treatment when I arrived, and the bill wasn't as bad as I expected. It cost uh, £160. I had to ask for the foot brake to be lowered and the stalling issue looked at. Well, it still stalls uh, suddenly in traffic, but at least I have a two-year guarantee uh, with the bike, so hopefully I can get this and any other little niggles sorted out. Now, when I say a local KTM dealer, as far as I can see, there are only two within 100 miles of my home. Now, I had a complete surprise uh, when I found a rare, warm, dry and sunny day in January to take the bike out. Uh, the young man that I'd met on the road a few months ago suddenly turned up just as I was setting my camera up to continue with this review. Well, 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 fancy bumping into you, Brad. Again. <laughs> so what's this little beauty then? Well, this is my new KTM Duke 125 after the Honda that I had in the uh, last video that I was in. Uh, so oh. I thought, might as well treat myself for a new bike. So I um, got one of these. So and of course, it's very similar to my 390, isn't it? Frame. Yes. The, the frame, uh, apart from the subframe, I believe is pretty yeah. much identical. You were thinking of getting something else, but you changed your mind. Yeah, well, for my A2, I'm thinking about possibly getting a uh, 690 SMC Supermoto, which is the big single-cylinder Supermoto that KTM do. They also do the Enduro version as well. So all the, all the reviews, they've been saying that they're really good. Oh, but they love KTMs in India because that's where these are made. Yep. So for the remainder of this review, I'm using footage taken by Brad and myself on our respective bikes. And I think what I'll do is add the various thoughts I've had about the bike um, over the past few months of ownership. Well, to be honest, when Brad turned up on a 125 KTM, he certainly wasn't hanging about, so I obviously had to rack up my game a bit. But I gave the RC390 a bit of stick for the first time, uh, but nothing excessive. I took the revs up to about 9,000, uh, and I think the power uh, band comes in at about 9,000, so I probably haven't got that kind of full punch that the bike's capable of. Uh, but it's impressive. Now what I'm pleased to announce is that the mirrors didn't drop off with the vibration. But then I don't really care because they are completely useless. In fact, I do care. I actually think they are dangerous as I can't see anything behind. Okay, so what else is of mention? I found off when I was looking for a seventh gear. Uh, the display is a little disappointing. I still can't easily work out the various trips, so I haven't got an accurate MPG yet but I guess it's somewhere in the 60s. Uh, the mode change on the left, you can neither see or feel with gloves in the dark. And call me old fashioned, but I sorely miss the twin analog taco and speedo of my GSX-R 400. The strip taco, I reckon is uh, showing 2000 RPM when it's ticking over, and yet I reckon it's nearer 1000 RPM. I've got some rattles around the tank, uh, speaking of which, the capacity is rather low because there's a battery stuck there in front and I'm looking forward to a sexy little tank bag that I can clip on. I can't use my magnetic one because the tank casing is plastic. Now build quality is on my mind and I've got nothing to fault it other than the uh, rather irritating scratch that appeared on the, uh, the face here of the instruments. But I'll, I'll need to do another review, um, you know, as time progresses. I'll probably put it away for the winter as I don't like salt on the roads. So don't forget to regularly clean that lovely little frame. I guess the verdict on this bike, in a word, is uh, gorgeous. Oh yes, in closing, I decided to get a signature number plate made up and I took a bit of license over the registration number. Well, at least when my RC390 is parked, someone might think twice about knocking it over. Thanks for watching.